Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Um, I mean, I'm excited to be here at the the launch of the Canned Laughter event here at the Equity headquarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love to know uh, more about yourselves and you know why you are here today. Absolutely. Well, I can start if you like, and, and because I've known Jonathan for years. And what happened is down it's in part the part of his problems. Part of my problem. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens? I've always known Jonathan as a fantastic comedian and actor and everything else. And it was only fairly recently <clears throat> that we started talking about serious issues, about what what went on in his past and so on and so forth. Mm. And I was organising a series of events around mental health. And Jonathan said, "I would like to come along and be one of the speakers." And so we started talking about that on a, a much bigger basis. And for many years, Jonathan's had this glorious pun about wanting to do comedy in Cannes. Mm. And the whole idea was, let's do comedy in Cannes, we'll call it Cannes Laughter. Mm. And so what we talked about is actually we could probably make that a bit broader, because Cannes Laughter is actually artificial laughter. Mm. And artificial laughter hides the real hurt that's going on inside. And so what we said, let's combine mm. forces. If you're going to get your story out there, let's get a platform and work on that sort of basis. Absolutely. Can Laughter came from, um, actually, I'm um, five and a half years sober. And um, it came when I was drinking. And I was uh, at Can, and I don't know if you've been to Can, but it's a bit like Disneyland with security guards. It's, um, it's, it's slightly soulless and full of people sort of trying to make movie deals, very drunk a lot of the time. But there isn't really any lightness there. And I remember thinking, why is this place where comedy is such a big business? It's such a, why is there none of it here, apart from the odd comedy movie they screen? And that was my first instinct, was I, I went to a place called the Super 8 Tent, and I saw them make, shoot, show films which, which were shot without editing. And so all the mistakes were in them. Oh, right. Right? And that was hilarious. And this room was full of people laughing. And I thought to myself, this is brilliant. Why is there not more of this? Why don't we celebrate the great comedians? You know, the Jacques Tati of France, the uh, Roberto Benigni of Italy. You know, there are so many brilliant, Jack Dario Fo's brilliant plays, his comedy, and people who've created comedy over the years. Peter Sellers, where's he? You know, never won an Oscar. There, wasn't, there isn't a comedy Oscar. Why? Why? <laughs> you know, it's the hardest form you can ever do. More so on film than on stage, because no one laughs when you're shooting, right? There's a camera going, mm, you know? And you know you've got to get it right on film. So that's what I thought. And then when I sobered up, I saw a deeper level because I started to understand my own troubles and my own worries and what had stopped me from, you know, I, not, I, I wouldn't, there are moments you get those black moments in your head where you think, what's the point? <laughs> you know, and, those and I understand that so many comics must have felt that. And now, so seeing more and more clarity, I realized that canned laughter was absolutely vital because it's not just about, you know, who's gone before, it's how those people went and why they never owned themselves. You have to own yourself in life. And when you start to own yourself and own up, to, own, not own up, but, but um, you know, speak about your truth, speak in integrity and say, this is actually what did happen to me. Maybe other people will start to understand and maybe this industry will become more real. And I think that's the catalyst, isn't it? Mm. Because what, what we're really trying to do here is to encourage people to talk. Yeah. The whole idea of canned laughter, Absolutely. starting with that wonderful joke, yeah, yeah, the little yeah. play on words, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Because the problem with this profession is people have to give the ear, air, if you like, of success. Yeah. Everybody everywhere turns around, how are you? Well, I'm busy. How are you? We're phenomenally successful. This is what we're doing. And social media has a, a horrible part to play in this. Because mm -hmm. if you look at people's social media page, you are thinking that they have got the best life that anybody could ever have. You only post pictures of people sitting on a beach and being happy. I'm going off skiing with a thousand huskies now, and, uh, <laughs> and you're working on that sort of basis. And what happens is then you spiral if you're sitting at home in an industry where you're putting yourself out there all the time, you then get that spiral of depression. Because you think that everybody else is having a terrific time and you're being miserable. And so yeah. what Jonathan and I wanted to do was actually, it's okay not to be okay. Let's mm. get a few people encouraging them to speak out about it. And what we found out when we did the first of these series of talks uh, at Equity is the number of people who came forward was really quite refreshing. Because it sort of was like giving people permission to say people have problems. Life isn't always mm. glossy and, and rosy and so on and so forth. You're not the only one. You're, you're not know. the only no. one. And no, so that's all, why we said we'd turn around and encourage people to speak. And so people like Jonathan who have the courage to get out and speak will be the catalyst for others to come forward as well. Yeah. And the one thing that Jonathan and I were saying is that if we save one life, then it's been worthwhile. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, the, the, what people have to realise that... Um, I, I, I said this, he said that, that, oh, he's difficult to work with. This is often bandied around in this industry as a phrase, and it's very irritating because people who are difficult to work with are often geniuses. 
People who are difficult to work with are the Peter Sellers of this life, who was difficult to work with, but no one actually asked him, what's wrong with you, Peter? <laughs> no, you know, he didn't actually have time in his life, yeah. and certainly wasn't looked at in those days for any psychiatric... Well, he, I mean, he did go and see therapists, but he didn't own himself. He didn't say, this is me. This is what went on with, what went on with me, and this is who I am. So you see, I'm, I'm wearing Cook, he's my hero. This man died of alcoholism. My father died of alcoholism, right? This man, I think, was abused when he was at school. I I'm not absolutely sure, but I know from my own experience, I'll go into that with Andrew later, but my own experience, that abuse is very common in, in, in he was at a boarding school and he was sent there when he was very young. And Radley, the school he went to, you know, uh, it, it's very common. And so I think that might have been why he drank. I know it's certainly why I did. And um, I think, you know, that is why we have so many great people, you know, Carolina Hearn, I mean, the list goes on, um, Peter, well, Peter said, Tommy Cooper, you know, I mean, and, and, and then Tony Hancock, you know, some of the greats, and George Sanders, one of the greatest Hollywood actors, if you want, kills himself in 72. So, you know, there are so many who've gone and yeah. weren't able to explain or speak and that's the tragedy of it all. And, yeah, and, and, and you're, you're right. I mean, touching on the tragedy side, I mean, we're here at equity, the, the equity sort of symbol, if yeah. you like, uh, the, the, the theatre, the tragedy and the, and the, and the comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And we're always, I, I was discussing it with one of our other speakers uh, a little bit earlier, we're always expected to wear the comedy mask. Yes. It's very rare that people want you to turn around and sort of say, OK, how are you feeling? We don't, we don't give an honest answer as to how you're feeling. Everybody said, I'm OK, I'm exactly. fine, I'm great. Yeah, that's it. We say, we, we say, oh, I'm fine. How do you know? How do you know you're fine? Have you seen a doctor? How do you know the guy next door is, isn't a psycho psychopath? You've no idea. Also, if you look at this mask here if, on the Equity logo, you'll see canned laughter, exactly what it's about, the yeah. smile. Hiding, uh, but sorry, the, the sadness hiding behind the smile. Yeah. And yet, I don't think people look at it quite like yeah. that, you know? It's very interesting, isn't it, that that's our logo, yeah. and yet it's all that canned laughter's about. It's very fitting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in your own experience, did you find trouble speaking about it to others, especially in the industry, or...? I remember one time when um, uh, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I whispered to my sister that I was abused at my school when I was a little boy, and, and, and I, I wasn't able to say anything about it. You know, I just sort of whispered it. Now I'm very angry and I speak out because I feel it's so important not to, sh to share that with everybody, to people to understand, you know, it is okay not to be okay. So, so you know, for me, that's, it was absolutely, it, it came with a trickle and now it's a roar. You know, it's, it's like the sheep is now the lion. Um, and, and, and I'm roaring and I'm bloody angry about my life. I'm very angry the way I was treated um, and the way my... F yeah, and my father was, uh, as I say, a difficult man in, in many ways. So, um, yeah, um, but, but particularly he put us in charge in a place which was certainly an appalling place to be. All my brothers, I don't know, I have two brothers who went there as well. I don't know what happened to them. They don't, one of them, he won't come out to England. So there's, it's far-reaching, this, you know. It's, it's, da it's, di it's dark and difficult, the, where, the places we have to go in life, but sometimes we have to go there. For, and I'm so glad that we can, you know, do this, because yeah. it's absolutely vital. Yeah, and express it and then help others. And yeah. just, as you said, yeah. you know, one person speaks out, it brings more people, it gives them more courage and yeah. uh, to speak out. Like with the, even like the Harvey Weinstein case, uh, one uh, person spoke out, it, so many more came absolutely. out. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and, it's and, a ripple and, effect, yeah, isn't it, 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 Andrew? It's, 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 it's totally the ripple effect. effect. And, and talking about the ripple effect, and, and uh, as we're going to discuss today, is yes. one in four people ha has a mental illness. Yes. One in four. Yes. The suicide rate, and I, I was reading the statistics again today, the suicide rate is about one in five people had suicidal thoughts. And if you look at uh, what was happening on the news again this morning, the BBC were talking about um, the number of people in the education system, youngsters, being reported with mental health problems and issues. And I think that's a lot to do with our society. It's a society where we have greater means of communication, the technology is really advanced, but as a result of which we communicate far less than we ever have in history. Mm. And the reason for that is because you have artificial expectations. People, that the media is, is to blame in a lot of this. Everybody wants to, you ask people what they wanted to be in the old days, you want to be a, a train driver, maybe a doctor or a lawyer or things like that. Now they want to be reality stars. Yeah. You know, when was that ever a job? It was interesting, <laughs> as brilliant as that is. But it's giving an artificial Isn't it incentive. funny when Isn't you say weird? you call it a reality star and actually it's, it's surreality star. They should be sort of, because it, it isn't fake. real, is it? It's, I, it's what's fake, but it's supposed to be reality, I, but it's not reality. It's, I, I, I should it's say, enhanced I, reality. No, absolutely, but I should say some of my best friends are reality stars. So <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it's a fantastic job for that. Buddy. But the trouble is, and this is, this is where we can help, the whole idea about being real. Because the other thing that we do in this industry, we are rotten to each other. 
My absolutely yeah, rotten yeah, to yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. And I have been shocked at how certain people talk. If you go in the room, they're all very jolly to each other. Behind their back, you know, the sort of things that people say to each other. And the things we've got to do is actually question it. Yeah. So often, perception and reality are not aligned. And I would always urge people, firstly, treat people with respect. But secondly, don't just pay lip service to it. Actually go out there. If people say something about somebody, say, well, firstly, you should be saying that to them, not to, to them. me. And secondly, just don't believe, just don't swallow it and regurgitate yeah. the, the vile rubbish that's, that we do in this industry. Um, so what we would do and what we can do later today, and I'm delighted that you're here with your Thank massive you. film Thank crew. You and um, really, really appreciate yeah, your time. Yeah, I do enjoy today. Um, I, I think it's going to be an emotional roller coaster. We have yeah. a lineup of brilliant speakers. What I'm really pleased about is that within a nanosecond of, of announcing it, it was fully booked. So Amazing. many people on the website, it exploded. It's so <laughs> exciting, you know, because I'm, my hero is a, this man was the biggest troublemaker there. He changed the face of British comedy. If you don't know him, have a look. This man was extraordinary, and he's my hero. Uh, he died so young, but this is a man who was a troublemaker. I'll be quite frank. My other hero is John, Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols. Now, you may not like the Sex Pistols, but you cannot deny that they changed the face of music. You have got to stir ripples in this world in order to make an impact. And really, if my career goes downhill because some person says, oh, I never want to work with him or they blacklist me, I don't care because this is what's important. Yeah. Fantastic. And if you didn't manage to come today, you can talk, talk about passion and things like that. Um, we are doing lo a series of events. Uh, we, we've committed to doing this because of the, the tremendous feedback. Mm. Say, it's fully booked in instantly. There's a massive waiting list. We could have done this three times over. And we're now going to do uh, events. The next date is on the yeah. 7th of October. Book early. We'll give you details yeah. a little bit yeah. later on. Watch out on the website. Yeah. But book early. And we're also doing another one. We're hoping to do one in Cannes to, to go to yeah. Jonathan's pun about comedy in yeah, Cannes. Exactly. Um, but also there will be another one um, at, at the beginning of January. Check out the website. Can laughter. It's okay not to be okay. Check yeah. it out on the listings. Google that. You'll find all sorts of things. Uh, and do definitely come along. And I want to say one more thing. Um, I did um, a program. This is, this is I think, very important. I did two programs on television. I did a thing called Boarding Schools, The Secret Shame, which was on ITV Exposure last November, or was it in November before, I think so, and ITV News Southwest. And we talked, I talked about my time as a child abused in these schools. And as a result of that, 300 other people came forward. That's what happens. Wow. Just from this, what we're filming now, what can happen is extraordinary. Amazing. And I think perhaps in the back of my mind, when I thought about canned laughter, I think that tele I was very glad that I'd done that yeah. because it was a you know catalyst to where we are yeah, now. Absolutely. And it shows how much you know um, people need this because uh, you know fully booked and uh, you know people want more. But people do want to connect and talk about these issues because if they haven't, uh, you know, if they've experienced this and they have no one to talk to, it's just going to eat them inside. Absolutely. And you need to be absolutely. around those who understand. Yeah, you, well. you are not totally. alone. Uh, you that's the whole point. And talk about no. it. Talk about it with honesty. Talk, absolutely. Yeah. Say to anybody. Say it. to anybody. Don't worry about it. And don't worry about what people think. I remember my, I phoned up my agent about going on television and talking about my boarding school. And I said, what do you think? At the time, I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. I thought, oh, my God, I'm, I'll never work again. You know, that was in the back of my head. And um, they said, if that had been six years ago, it might have been difficult. But see, they said, times are changing, and we think it's all right that you do it. So I did do it. And I'm glad I did, you know? Um, you know, we can't shy away from stuff. I mean, this stuff is bigger than anything, you know, bigger than the movie industry, it's bigger than this, that, or the other. What we're doing now could revolutionise people's minds. And it's not just this business, it's any business. It's any young child who's got troubles, it's any young drama student, it's anyone who's got problems. It's not just this industry. But this industry is paramount because it is the one that's in focus all the time. It's the one where we're always desperately trying to look young. It's always, it's the one where, when in no other industry do you notice you yourself age so much. In this industry, you're continually noticing ageing. For God knows, they're looking for creams and God knows what. And uh, somebody said, somebody said very recently, you know, it's amazing, um, uh, there's a director, she said, it's amazing, behind the, in front of the camera, actors are always looking 10 years younger than the people on the street because they're desperate to try and keep their, their longevity or whatever yeah. it is. There's so much pressure because so you're much. right in front of everything. Whereas a lot of people can go home or whatever it is, in this business you've got to be, ha ha, this is me, I'll die happy. You know, and it's just, 
It's, yeah. it's too it's, much. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah, because no one can Bloody be okay all the time. No, no. And that's what the industry kind of expects, you know, for the audience, yeah. for you to get more work. A lot of people try to, like, use and abuse other people in this industry God, as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. And that's yeah. another thing. I think people should come forward and, like, talk about it so that yeah. it's, you know, There are people in this industry, even, even to this day, who I, I've had two instances this year where I was abused by people in, in that sense of, of not treating you fairly. Yeah. In a, in, you know, in the equilibrium of, of, of this, we are now in equity, our union, you know, and, and there are two times um, where things have been difficult, you know. And I, I think it's also important on that point is that absolutely there are genuine victims in this sort of situation, but yeah. sometimes people can claim things which are not necessarily true. So in the same absolutely, way, yes, and that's, that's, why, that's why I say you do need to question everything, yeah. because sometimes the best thing you can do as a friend is rather than just turn around and say, oh, it's terrible, this person has bullied me, it's actually helped them think through that. Because so often, so the point I was making beforehand is it's about perception. And yeah. perception and reality are so often not aligned. You can guide people through that process. Can you say, well, actually, what did happen? Yeah. Let's talk to the person. Let's see what they're thinking about it. What did they intend? And I think as an industry, if we can do that, it will help on both sides. Yeah. yeah, so that there's no misunderstanding. Absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes people also, they, they feel like they're in danger or they feel like they're going to be used, but actually the other person didn't intend it that way. And um, I think it's because of all the scare with, you know, the media and bringing forward things. Absolutely. That now that some people are even scared to go to work. I know some friends who say like, oh, I'm, I don't want to go just in case of this situation or that situation. So, so there's also fear added. So it, that's why it's good to just talk it through and just you so know, much. It, encourage so people much. to talk. If, if we yeah. can, I say, encourage people to communicate, to say, look, people this is how it's perceived. You work on that sort of basis. At the moment, people don't understand people. That's the problem. We, have, we work in an industry where people are, uh, have positions of power and they abuse those positions of power over the people who are employed to do the jobs. You know, sometimes this happens. Not all the time. There's some wonderful people. But there are times when that position of power can be very much abused. And you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know what laws you've got. You, you're kind of in a, in a situation where you've got to shoot whatever it is and you're trying to be terribly nice to people. I remember there was one time when I was forced to smoke a cigarette. I didn't want to smoke the cigarette, but I felt duty-bound to do it because I just arrived on set and I wanted to be nice to people. You know, that's the kind of pressure we're under. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. And the whole fake it till you make it thing as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Help with the... But the, the trouble with that phrase, it, it implies that by the time you make it, you no longer fake it. And, and I can tell you that at every level, we were talk, discussing earlier about success and what that means. And we know we deal with royalty and billionaires and whatever. Everybody has issues. Yep. The whole idea uh, that once you've made it, all your issues up, they don't. Because you're worried next year that somebody else is going to make it and, and people are sort of clambering behind you. And boy, are there people clambering behind exactly, you. Yeah. And I think yeah. the reality is, let's just be honest, we all have issues. Life is not always rosy. Not and the sure. sooner we can wake up and give people the tools to deal with life, the better. Exactly. And that's what we're going to do. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, it's all very full. Lovely brilliant. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. And Love thank it. you to our brilliant cameraman as well. Ah, Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.